good luck trying to call me on the phone though. It's terrible. That's fine. So, Erin, thank you very much for, for coming on to the show because I, I know that, uh, like everybody else, you're probably very busy. You've got work, you've got family, you've got music. So it is appreciated that you make the time. And then, obviously, with the time difference, I believe it's probably just morning time for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop it, though. I'm normally, I'm normally awake at this point. It's like very rarely I'm not, so... This is all yeah. good. I'm like so glad you let me come on. A lot of people very hesitant because I'm not from the I'm not from the UK. No, no, that, that, that's fine. It's good to try. And, uh, this is just a, a, a new podcast that started a few months ago. Okay. So we're just trying to kind of spread our wings and, and yeah. go, go everywhere. Uh, there's there's no excuses with the way technology works nowadays. Yeah, so uh, yeah. we're coming on and. Um, yeah. We'll go right back to the very beginning. So we're going to find out about yourself and music and we'll talk about your music as well. So, but going back when you were just a, a, a wee kid, were you mm -hmm. into music from a very early age? Yeah. Um, I remember singing along with like Britney Spears in the car or like my top tier one is Uncle John's Band by the Grateful Dead. Like I remember like trying to sing each part separately. Um, but from a really early age, I was like super fascinated with like instruments and singing and performing. So it just, it kind of ended up being like real, a really natural progression from like the, I was to, I was going to say, where, where did the, the, the musical influence come from? Was that just your parents? I'd definitely say mostly my parents. Um, my mom was a stay at home mom, which was really cool. Um, in the nineties. Um, and she would bring us to the library each week, so she would let us just pick out whatever CDs we wanted, yeah. and we would just take them home. Um, my mom comes from a musical family, and my dad also comes from a musical family, so you can catch him sometimes. It's like real elusive, but he does sing. It's just yeah. not, doesn't do it in front of people. <laughs> what, um, what music was your mom and dad listening to back then? Um, my dad was definitely like 70s classic rock um, and southern rock, which I've learned was a really big thing that there was like Cali rock and there was southern rock. Um, rock was really regionalized in the 70s, which was neat. Um, my mom listened to like everything. So I knew we listened to like Tchaikovsky, we listened to Mozart, but we also listened to like Red Hot Chili Peppers and yeah. like Eminem. Um, so my mom is has always been a really like whiplash listener that she'll pick everything. She'll be like, oh, isn't this cool? So I definitely I was exposed to a lot of like styles of music really early on. And was there a was there an age that you remember where you were where you discovered your own musical taste? My musical taste is constantly like evolving. I remember if you took my iPod in like high school, it was yep. mostly filled with The Smiths um, okay. and like Ingrid Michaelson and Broadway soundtracks. But then at like as I each like phase of my life, I add like a new genre into like what I'm listening to. So I'm still like. I'm still listening to stuff I listened to as like a kid, but yeah. I'm also listening to like Bauhaus. Um, so it's like Britney Spears and Bauhaus. It's like a... <laughs> yeah. It's funny because um, obviously I was maybe similar to yourself growing up, um, especially my dad listened to a lot of music and it was bands he would have grown up with. So it would have been the Beatles, the Doors, yeah. bands like that. And, uh, and I remember when I was 10 years old, I discovered the band that is on your t-shirt <laughs> just now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my friend, I can remember it, it's clear as day, although, you know, I start to show my age because it was more than 30 years ago, but my friend came down to the house when I was 10 years old uh, with a, a copy of a cassette tape. Oh, man. He said, put, put this in, just listen to it, and it was Metallica. And, it, oh. and I, from there, I was just like, I don't know what this is, but I love it. And, uh, I was like 10 when I first really listened to ACDC. And that was like, I had like a 
pink ACDC shirt I got back in black for like my birthday. Oh, that like, I feel like when you're 10, you gotta find someone like really kind of like, ah! <laughs> Yeah. And it, it, well, in saying that, I'm saying I discovered them when I'm 10. I still, I still like them to this very yeah. day. Yeah. But your musical taste does then broaden as you get older. And I don't think you necessarily fall out of love with any of the bands that you discovered, but you just yeah. end up listening to more. Yeah. Do you remember who the, what was the first concert that you ever went to? Oh man, this is a good one. Um, it was the, the first like, I guess like the first pop concert I saw was the Jonas Brothers, um, which is fun because they also come from New Jersey. I was in like <laughs> middle school. But before that, I ended up, it was like my first real concert. It was still at the same stadium and everything. I got to see Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Right. Um, and that was insane. They had like pyrotechnics and everything. Um, that was really cool. Yeah. And uh, so I know that you play the, the ukulele. Is that your main instrument? Um, kind of. I went to school for music ed. So I'm like proficient in everything. Right. Um, my main instrument when I went to school was actually voice, but I picked up the ukulele teaching and I haven't put it down since. I love it so much. Um, so it's like my main performing instrument, um, so but I play everything. When you were first learning, was, was <laughs> singing your, your first instrument? What? When you were first, when you were learning uh, instruments, when you were starting to learn music, yeah. was, sing was singing your first instrument that you learned? I guess so. I started singing really early. The first instrument I got lessons in was piano. Did you get singing lessons or was it just something that you enjoyed doing? I started getting singing lessons in high school. Um, because the choir scene, we have like regional choirs, we have state choirs, we have like a national choir, an eastern seaboard choir. Um, and like getting into those is really kind of competitive. Um, so I started getting voice lessons to help with like auditions and stuff. And I was doing a lot of theater, so that helped there. Um, but I got vocal lessons uh, like late in, the, late in the game of my singing career, I guess. <laughs> And how did you, how did you get into, when you were a teenager, did you, did you start a band? Or how did you get into playing in bands? I didn't. Um, I wish. Where I grew up, it's really kind of rural. So trying to find even like a place for like a teenage band to play is like really, really hard. Um, we don't have a ton of all ages venues. Um, and we're really far away from all the cities so like starting a band out here is cool you might end up playing for like your friends um but i was doing a lot of theater production so i was in like at least one musical a year from like middle school to when i graduated high school yeah so you, you're still performing even if not within a band setup you're still on stage performing yeah get, getting your confidence being in front of people as well yeah yeah so um, how did you come about your best nightmare? Is, is that yourself as a solo artist or is there an actual band behind you? I'm the band, um, but it, when I perform on stage, I am entirely solo. Um, I'd love to do a full band show. I've got like, my drummer is not far away. Um, I have a friend who plays bass. I have a friend who's done like guitar on some of my yeah. tracks. Um, but your best nightmare came about a few years ago, I got like really sick um, and I started to forget how to like read music and stuff. So I ended up writing music and performing music and I was like, well, I need a name. I can't just be myself. Yeah. Um, what if someone finds me like a student? Uh, I'd get in trouble. <laughs> um, so I came up with your best nightmare because I didn't think I was the worst. Um, I was like, I'm talking about important things. So I guess I'm the best nightmare. So. Obviously, it's a solo project. You, I mean, I, I'm a, a musician as well, so, you know, enjoy creating songs and that. How do you go about um, writing a song? So, for example, what 
what inspires you, you to write a song? And I'll give you an example. See the amount of times I'm driving in the car, mm -hmm. driving in the car, and I'll have the radio on, or I'll be listening to, you know, a bit of music, and there might just be one little, one little bit of the song, or maybe a, a lyric, a line in the lyrics mm -hmm. that just it, so, it does something, it inspires something in your head that I can then go away myself and create a whole song, and the song that I create is not. It's not got anything to do with with the song that inspired it. Yeah. But I mean, how that that's how I tend to go about songwriting. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult, and you've got to sp spend a little bit more effort trying to get the song to come together. But how do you go about songwriting in general? Ah, uh, for the most part, I end up writing the lyrics first, which I know for some people it's like I just have lyrics and then I have nothing else. Um, oh. But I've done a lot of journaling recently to kind of just like write down ideas before i commit to a full set of lyrics um yep. but for the most part i listen to like ambient sound and i just write things mm -hmm. um and from there i start to pull out what works and what doesn't work or i've got like a like a progression in my head or i've got a little melody i've played on the ukulele that i'm like this yep. This, this music thing and these words, I think would go together. And so there's like a lot of, I feel like I'm like building with like Legos that I have yeah. like a brick here and I have a brick here and I'm like, will they work? Maybe not. Yeah. Um, but I have like notebooks of just like words. Yeah, um, I mean, I have to say that I, I find that method quite unique because most people that I speak to, it's, including myself, it, it's the complete opposite. So I, I always come up with the music first mm -hmm. and I might have a vocal melody in my head but I, I don't know what the lyrics are. Usually I'll have the song completed and then I'll leave the lyrics till last. And most people I speak to are probably the same. Uh, and occasionally, it, it doesn't happen very often, but occasionally I will write down the lyrics first. Mm -hmm. Very, very rarely does that actually then turn into a song. Yeah. <laughs> usually always the music that comes first and it seems to be the same for most people that I speak to so that's quite unique for yourself to do it the other way around. Yeah and I've had songs that I wrote lyrics for and then I've played them and I've had them for a while and then I look at it and I'm like I think I'm gonna use this entirely different set of lyrics now for this this song that I thought was done. And I think that's a, been a weird one for me that I've, I've had that happen now a few times that I've written a song based on lyrics I already had, and then I wrote something different. I was like, wait, that should actually go here. Yeah. Um, that always feels really bizarre to me. I'm like, I've already finished this. I feel like I moved on and my brain said no. Yeah, and uh, I think I probably know the answer to this, but if I was to take your lyrics mm -hmm. and, and read them without hearing the music or that, um, would your lyrics make sense? Would, if you're telling a story, would it be obvious what you're singing about. Yes. Um, and I've definitely had people say they're like, it should be in a movie or like a Netflix series. I'm like, well, thank you. It's how my brain worked on it. Um, yeah. But when I, my album's coming out next week, which feels weird, yeah. um, but I put it in a specific order so that the lyrics would all make sense. So it's like each song is like a different chapter of the story. Yeah, well, I, I was going to ask you as well because um, I don't know what age you are, but uh, for myself, when I was growing up, you, you didn't have the internet. So, uh, you know, one of the things with music, if you went to a music shop to to, to buy a new CD, you would you could pick something simply based on the artwork. You know, mm -hmm. this, this is a this is a cool album cover. Yeah, I want to buy that. And then obviously as time has progressed and the way that people access music now, you know, you, you stream music online, you download it, you can access it through YouTube and various other platforms. It's almost like the, the artwork for some people or for maybe a certain generation, it's almost irrelevant, but to me it's still important. Do you think artwork is still important for your yes. music? Yes, yeah. I do. Um, every time I look at an Iron Maiden cover, I'm like, artwork is still important. Um, 
The, I like I am obsessed with like the Iron Maiden album covers. Um, I'm, I love Iron Maiden, but like looking at an album cover and being able to understand the mood or like what could really like what is the artist thinking? What yeah. does the artist want to show you about something that you're mostly just listening to? Um, it, I really I really do think artwork is still important. And even what you were saying there, that you, you, you have the songs in a certain order so that the lyrics mm -hmm. maybe make sense or they tell a story, but that's another thing because years ago, if you wrote 10 songs, mm -hmm. it was important what the track listing was. So you had to have this opener, you know, this is the first song, and then yeah. it's, got, it's got to lead into this next song, mm -hmm. and so on, and then it's, the album's got to end in this song. Whereas that can almost be forgotten as well because a lot of people don't listen to albums now, they listen to... Or you have like a bunch of albums and they're shuffled. Yeah. I've gotten better at that. I used to be really bad about not listening to whole albums. Yep. Um, but I really like, I think it's such a treat. I'm a real vinyl fanatic, um, but even on Spotify, I like to pick, if I'm listening to an artist, I'll pick an album and then just listen to it in its entirety because I feel like sometimes you miss the message yeah. or you miss like the stylistic points of an album. Yeah. Like you, you, you lose it without the, the whole album. So I know that your album is out next week. Mm -hmm. so this is maybe the wrong time to ask about this, but uh, do you enjoy recording or is recording something that you've got to do in order to really play gigs? Oh, I love recording. Yeah. I feel so neat. I have a rather unconventional studio, which is my walk-in closet. Um, so I set up like my mic, I have like my mic filters, I have my headphones, my like, I'm like Logic now. I just, I'm like experimenting with Logic, but mm -hmm. I've really started to get super into the recording process. Um, and I really, I really love learning new things. So I've been learning about different plugins that I can put in on like my bass when I record to see like what kind of sound can I get out to achieve like the new message I'm trying to convey. Um, I think I, I love it personally and some people don't. Yeah but... I mean I, I've got a, I've got a home studio as well and it, mm. it's nothing spectacular but it, it, it suits me but um, it's that thing as well though that technology has advanced so much especially in maybe the last 30 years it's it's so accessible to to have your own recording equipment in your house yeah. now and you can you can do it but you know when you think back to years and years ago the doors or the beat bands like that mm -hmm. they, they would go into the recording studio in the late 60s and they would record what what we view as a classic album now mm -hmm. they record it in maybe a week. They'd yeah. record very fast and they would be recording on like a four track, something ridiculously simple. Yeah. And, and you fast forward all these years and we've got home studios that are probably better than what they were using back then. Mm -hmm. But do you think, you know, they back then they maybe had four tracks to work with and what, what they lacked in technology they made up for in creativity. Mm -hmm. Is it? Do you think it's bad nowadays that you can almost have the technology so good? Does it affect the songwriting? I, oh, that's a good or question. It, maybe, maybe it depends on the person. I was gonna say I think it might depend on the person. That I feel like, and this is like something I've seen definitely a lot on like threads, different forums, all that stuff that there seems to be such a pressure for artists to constantly be creating new music. Mm -hmm. um, that it's like, oh, you need like a song out every six months or like you should have an EP out every year that I think some of that pressure on top of like the technology we have, I feel like sometimes that might take away from like an artist, like how the Beatles had just like a week to record it and they had this one album and it lasted them for a while and then they got to kind of like hang out and experiment with new stuff for like the white album like that was wild but i think 
some artists succumb to that pressure of having to constantly put things out. And I think the technology is maybe what takes, like the how far technology has come takes yeah. away from it, like the, the savoring, savoring the process of it. Yeah, I mean, it's that thing as well though that, you know, technology is so good nowadays. If you were a perfectionist, mm -hmm. you, you might never finish the song because you, you keep adding to it and you keep, keep adding. Um, you know, whereas back in the day, back mm -hmm. in the olden days, you didn't have the joy of doing that because you were yeah. limited by technology. But it's weird because nowadays there's probably no arguments that sonically the music probably sounds better. Mm -hmm. uh, you can almost have it recorded to perfection. Yeah. But does it make the songs better? Because if you were to get the Beatles and you were to record them nowadays, yes, the songs probably would sound better sonically, but would the songs actually be better? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be, I know, and I know they had like the, the recently released Beatles song. That was a big yeah. deal here. That like, but it, it's not, I don't know. Like if we could like bring them as a whole group forward in time and be like, go in the studio, have fun. I think they would mostly all just be really shocked at how different it looks and they, we couldn't get yeah. anything done then. <laughs> yeah, so you obviously, you love recording. Uh, I'm guessing equally you love playing live as well. Yes. Um, I can talk, I love talking to people. Um, I am a teacher, so I like being in front of a group of people is part of my everyday life. Um, yeah. But I really like, um, I love performing. I like sassing the audience, I like talking to them. Sometimes mm -hmm. they talk back to me, sometimes <laughs> they kind of stare and they're like, oh, okay, she's rambling again, <laughs> this is neat. Yeah, so I know that um, your album, A Simple Solution for Talks, Toxic Masculinity, that is out on the 21st of March. Yes. It's got 11 songs on it. Yes. It had a wee listen to some of it, um, that you had the wee snippets that were up. Now I know obviously there's, you play the ukulele, mm -hmm. there's vocals, there's drums, there's bass. Is that all yourself recording? Uh, or? Everything but the yeah. drums is me. Is, is there another instrument? Is there like a... a there's key a, a keyboard. Organ? A little Sorry? keyboard. All right. Okay. Yeah, and I, I that's where I, I've been having a lot of fun with like the the program sounds you can find on on like Logic or GarageBand. That's like you can have this MIDI keyboard, but all of a sudden it can sound like this weird like squanchy organ. I, I'm loving it. So but the, yeah, the, everything but the drums is me. So the album is out next week. Mm -hmm. have burned. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there's two singles from the album that have already been released. So there was Ghost Town Love back in June, mm -hmm. and then Promising Young Woman back in December. Yes. Why did you pick those two songs to represent the album? Um, Ghost Town Love is the end of the album, and I remember recording it, and um, my friend who helped me produce it, um, he like loves the song. He's like, this is my favorite one. This is so cool, um, yeah. but I really, I like the bittersweet kind of feeling of it and I feel like that really encapsulates a lot of the energy of the, the story and then I feel like the other half of the story is really represented by Promising Young Woman that it's got this kind of like angry, like I'm gonna fight you, kind of, kind of vibe um, and I feel like that, those two together really help kind of give you like a 30 second snapshot of what the the whole album is like yeah they're, like, they're a good representation of what mm -hmm. of what to expect with the full album yeah yeah so erin we are we're quite early on in 2024 so, so what have you got planned for the rest of the year with regard to music i am going on tour um so i'm starting right now in april i'm gonna be going the Northeast, so I get to visit a few northern states for me. Um, yeah. But in August, um, location specific, I am going to be coming to the UK um, for like two weeks. Um, so I'm playing a festival, uh, I'm playing a few other shows. I do get to come all the way up to 
Edinburgh. Did I say it right? Yeah. I've been thinking about it deeply because um, there are a lot of places like I have family in Pittsburgh, and it's yep. U R G H. It's always just Berg. Um, yeah. Like I, I'm pretty sure it's Edinburgh, but That's I didn't want to mess it up. But yeah, I am coming. I am coming to, to Scotland. I'm gonna go to Ireland. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I live in between Glasgow and Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. So right in the very centre of Scotland, okay. and I've got family over in Ireland as well. So I'm like, I'm so, I'm so stoked. Um, my namesake, I'm like the most UK yeah. person. Um, uh, right down, even my middle name, I'm like, it's, it's wild. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm like super excited to go to the UK. I've never actually been. Um, and in the summer, I'm also going to be doing a tour of the east coast of the states. Yeah, I've seen that. I think that's, is that the one that's advertised on your website just now? So, um, so far, I only have my northeastern dates. Um, right. But in, like May or June, I'm going to be going like all the way down the, the, the coast. And then I come back up. So Erin, just before we finish up, we've been quite mm -hmm. serious all the questions so we're going to end it on a couple of fun questions for you okay okay so question number one imagine you have a time machine okay. and go back in time to witness one concert what would be the concert this oh man i would love like as a music history buff, I would love to go back and see Igor Stravinsky's premiere of The Rite of Spring because that, oh my God, everyone hated it. And like he went into hiding and I just, I really want to see it. So I understand why people got so mad initially. Yep. Um, and, and Stravinsky's cool, but he, everyone was so mad. They were like, this is the worst thing we've ever seen. And Stravinsky like went into hiding for like yeah. months. <laughs> Right, next one. If uh, and this this goes out to any musician, dead or alive. But if you could magically record a song with any 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 other musician, dead or alive, who would you love to record a song with? Song write with. My Chemical Romance. Yeah. Of the dream. Yeah. Um, we share a state, um, but they are they're like my top artists. Cool. And the very last question for you. Uh, Mount Rushmore, who is the four bands or musicians for yourself that are at the top of your pile that you just think they are perfection, whether it be songwriting, whether it be performance, whether it be the overall package, who are the, the top four for yourself? Oh man, okay, um, My Chemical Romance, Joni Mitchell, yep. she's a queen, um, The Eagles, David Bowie. There you go. That, that's a nice, um, a nice mix of artists. It's a well, well-rounded Mount Rushmore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and what's I always love that last question because it doesn't matter how many people ask that question to you, get a different answer every single time. Uh, everybody's different, and that's yeah. what makes it interesting. I love that's like that's a good one. I wish more people would ask. Those, that kind of question. But Erin, thank you very much for coming on. I, I do appreciate it and I, I really look forward to seeing how your album gets on and uh, we'll maybe bump into each other uh, later oh, in the year so if cool. you're through in Edinburgh. Yeah. But uh, until then, uh, good luck with the releases and, you know, keep, keep at it and uh, good luck with the album when it comes out and your future gigs as well. Thank you. No bother. Thank you, Erin. See you yeah, later. Yeah, have a good one. Cheers.